Pedro from me and BRX. I'm here today with Anton of Beast in Black to talk about Dark Connection out right now on Nuclear Blast. How are things going with you? Uh, pretty okay, thanks. Uh, enjoying this typical Finnish autumn. It's raining, cold and dark, so all good. <laughs> <laughs> Fits to the album theme. Everything is dark. Yeah, it definitely fits with the album name. How was the release party? I saw you guys holding some some awards, some trophies for for the the sales of, of the records. How was the party? It was really nice. Everyone had a good time there, nice mood, and we were really happy to receive the awards, but also to share uh, the awards with the crew and the people who were making those albums. So it's kind of a uh, celebration of giving you know not just to receive but you know see that people who have been working with us and that they also get some recognition and you know we we care about the wholeness the team you know the crew and the technician technicians the management and booking agencies the music video uh, team was, and all, all so it was really nice party and we all had a good time <laughs> Uh, let's start perhaps with a starting point. I've, I've been dying to, uh, this is my first time check, uh, chatting with you, so I've never had a chance to ask you this question, but uh, I've always wondered, what is your starting point when it comes to a Beast in Black record? Do you start with a riff? Do you start with, with a lyrical idea? Do you start with a theme or a concept of what you want for the album? What's your starting point? It's always totally open book, basically. I go through the song catalog that I have, or a section of it you know i've been writing songs since i was since i was 12 or 13 something like that and of course i don't go through the ideas which i wrote when i was 12 or 13 most of them are really bad but you know <laughs> when i was a teenager i think i started started to get some good stuff around those like 15 16 years old good stuff around that age and so I just go through the old stuff and whatever resonates in me. Like if I get excited from some old fully completed song or a half completed song or a riff or melody or a chord progression, I just write it down. I make some, some kind of a text file, collect all these old ideas. And at the same time, I write brand new stuff and kind of combine all that. And it's really a kind of a, controlled chaos so to speak you know so, so much goes uh so much material goes through when i try to kind of make it clear for myself like what is the thing that i want from this wholeness you know usually it's enough variety at least you know musically speaking at least slow mid-tempo fast tempo songs but you just have to listen to the intuition kind of the creative instinct what resonates in you the strongest in like this time that you're working on and just select those ideas and songs and when there's usually 20 songs or 15 i play those to the band guys and they tell their opinions like which from those are their favorites and which are least favorite songs and then i still think on their opinions and like try to make the final uh, song selection based on that and after that I usually start to write lyrics uh, it's a separate process so music comes first but sometimes the songs are even born from a single lyrical line for example I can you know drive a car then something comes to my mind or I can take a stroll I see a couple of words somewhere even a commercial or something mm -hmm. like a you know, poster or somewhere it's totally random, you know, I, when idea comes, you just have to be, you got to have the creative instinct that when you feel something and like so, see or feel or hear something really small, but if that somehow hits you and don't let it go, okay, like do something with it, you know, it might turn into something bigger, you know, snowball effect it starts from very small. For example, the song Dark New World, I was just having a walk uh, with a good friend of mine, uh, Jan Karlsson, he's a merchandiser of our band and like he help, helps on many different things and we were just joking about something and, and about the line called like, Never Stop 
the madness. And that just kind of hit me. Okay, never stop the madness. And I started to think about the line and what's the rhythm, natural rhythm for the line. And the next thing I noticed, I have a song called Dark New World. And that's one of the lines in the chorus. In the chorus. Yeah, so it, the one line was the first thing. And then the music comes around it. But usually it's just the music without any like lyrical lines, just instrumental. And then I think, okay, what to write? But this time with Dark Connection, I knew in advance that it's going to be cyberpunk because already in the last de days or weeks of fi while finishing From Hell With Love, I knew that, okay, the next album is going to be probably cyberpunk. I, I feel some kind of a urge to go to that direction. Something in me wants to go there. So I knew that idea was already then that of the main kind of theme was born three years ago but i still didn't know what the songs are going to be about because cyberpunk is a huge world it's a big backdrop and you can drop any kind of story there so i started to think what kind of stories to tell well i was more fascinated about the relationships between humans and humanoid robots instead of just like the technological mumbo jumbo how awesome it is to have flying cars and like this virtual reality yeah that, that's nice but I've kind of written songs about that already in the past. With my previous band, Battle Beast, uh, in the first and the second album, not on the third one anymore, but the first two Battle Beast albums were heavily influenced by cyberpunk. And after that, I didn't touch that subject anymore until now with Beast in Black on Dark Connection. So it was like a return to the beginning. Yeah, I was going to say a little bit of a return to the roots for you. Yeah, but for the band, this is still a fresh, brand new profile, this cyberpunk thing. So it's a good thing for, for us. We're offering something new, which we haven't offered with Beast in Black. Is it a heavy load for you to carry the, the creative process behind the band? Or, or do you enjoy all the work that goes from the time that idea pops into your head until the almost the finished product? The best thing ever is to write and compose. And everything else is like hard work, you know, the studio stuff, the recording, producing, mixing, editing, mastering, and all that. That's a chore, like, so to speak, for me. It's just a necessary evil. You have to do it because when you compose, it's so easy. Like, wow, I wrote the notes and everything is perfect. But then when you have to do it with real musicians and you yourself have to play the solos and sing your own parts and then try to somehow make it in balance and sound good. And when you spend so much time with it, you're lose the sight of it of the objectivity like what is good what is bad and uh, i never kind of like the process of actual album making but in a way it's uh, it needs to be done and i learned in the years that i have to trust more and more myself because I, you know there are many uh, technicians mixing engineers and producers but i learned that okay you have to trust yourself because it always is the most efficient way if you educate yourself in something even though you're newbie in this thing but if you educate yourself do the work and you have the vision in the long run that's the best uh, solution you can have not to be dependent on someone else if you have everything so clear in your mind just do the work and learn new things and i'm always curious about learning uh, around you know the art field no matter what it is even if it's visual things like movies or paintings or when it comes to music mixing mastering producing you know i'm curious about that so that's why I kind of i'm happy that i have this curiosity to teach myself um, but it's difficult yeah when you spend so much time alone in the studio but yeah. uh, composing, composing is easy you know it takes usually from one day to one week and the, and the song is ready and lyrics are a different topic that takes time because you have to kind of fit the idea and the text into the melody but it cannot happen like this that you just take it and put it there you have to refine the text always and you know know the english language what parts of the word you can stress and stretch and whatnot, you know, all the nuances, every syllable has to be there comfortably, like in its own place. And many bands kind of just 
kind of force the lyric. You can hear it sometimes when they stretch some words in a in an awkward way. And I try to avoid that. I want everything to sound kind of natural and cor that it's pronounced correctly, like in a natural way, and still have the same kind of meaning and essence what I wanted to say with the uh, lyrical line. I mean, usually I can just write a prose, like a short poem that doesn't rhyme, but the idea is there, the story, mini story. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is always transforming that piece of text into a lyric without compromising the melody at all. And that's why it takes time with the text part. The band is, is super creative. The sound that you guys have is, is very innovative. It, it, when, when you're going through this whole process, do you have in your mind a set of boundaries that you feel like, okay, this is as far as I can take Beast in Black, and if I go beyond this, it stops being Beast in Black, or that's not a, even an issue for you because you know the band is just like this blank canvas. You can almost do anything that you want to do. Yeah, it's more like that blank canvas, but I am aware and the band is aware that we are essentially heavy metal band. But the beauty in metal, heavy metal to me is that it's the most liberating genre out of all. You can go from the smoothest, the most silent whisper and the slowest melody to the fastest and most aggressive and loud part and everything in between. You can do all that in heavy metal, but you cannot do that in other genres as freely or as much as you would like to maybe. Or even growling vocals. You cannot have growling vocals if you go to see Mozart's opera. There is <laughs> not going to be that. But you can have symphonic elements and opera in metal. So and all that growling stuff and Italo disco, Eurobeat and whatnot, AOR, pop. You can blend all that in heavy metal. But the most important thing is just to kind of experience the piece of art as it is. You know forgetting about the uh, genres, the boundaries of the genres, because if those are important, then you're kind of limiting yourself uh, from the potential in enjoyment of the art that you're experiencing. Like, okay, this is, maybe it's good, but I cannot like it because it's not inside these frames of pure heavy metal or something like that you understand what i mean yeah yeah I get and it. take a mo movie like titanic that's a drama film but if you quickly like have to describe it to someone but actually it's a it's an action film camouflaged as a drama film half of it is drama but then when the shit hits the fan it turns into a full-blown action survival film but there's still that uh drama part which is constant throughout the film and action is added there so you can make something that is that movie is bigger than the genre where it is you know it's more than drama it's more than action and that's what the songs can also make in my opinion in heavy metal because you can do everything there without losing the identity you know we are still heavy metal band but we do much more than just pure simple heavy metal when i look at beast in black and i look at it at the progression from each and every single record up until dark connection this album to me feels like it's perhaps the best connected album from beginning to end. It, it, it really, like, it feels like the songs are almost merging one into another. They just fit perfectly together in the overall experience of the record. What do you attribute to that factor on this album? Mm, well, first, first of all, thanks. I'm glad to hear that it feels like that. It actually matters so much in what order you put the songs. You can easily like ruin that feeling from just putting the songs in the wrong order. And I was asking help from other guys, uh, especially with Yanis. I remember in the last days, in the mastering days, I was asking him his opinion. OK, like, what is the ultimate best song like running order? And then we finally decided it, it was like a difficult decision. But then on the next day, I slept the night in the morning, I'm thinking, OK, I have another idea, even though we already said it. So it's really like haunting me until it's fully done and the set list is sent to the record label and the album is in the print. Until it's there, I, I can kind of cannot relax, you know, 
you know, it has to be out of my hands totally. So I cannot change it anymore. When that moment happens, then I'm kind of, okay, I have to accept it what it is and hope for the best. That, that was the best like choice. Uh, it, it's horrible. I think that's a problem of perfectionists. Like, they are so, so neurotic about these details and some things which are sometimes even not important. Uh, we get blinded, become blinded by these small details. And that's why it's good to have some other people trustworthy people around you and with you who can tell you honestly like okay Anton okay everything is all right now you're totally just going nuts like letting it go <laughs> you're too much like inside that. your own head yeah exactly yeah I, I I I can totally see that coming from you uh, the more creative you are the 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 deeper within the rabbit hole of your own mind you end up going Exactly. That's how it is. I try to learn away from that. Like, I keep telling that to myself for years, but well, in my career, I've done only six albums. Some producers, they have done hundreds of albums. So if I compare myself to those, I, I feel like, okay, there's still hope for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can you learn. You, you can learn. There's still there's still room for improvement. The when you when you look at the sound uh, of the synthesizers on on this record, is that a, a creative drive that push it that way, or do you feel like the theme of the record played a huge role as far as what you wanted out of the synths on this record? Actually, it's always about the songs what they ask for. It's the subjective view, totally. What I mean by that is, a good song is based uh, on a couple of ingredients, basically, melody and a chord progression. If you have that, let's say, chorus melody, that's great and perfect chord progression for that. And then the rest is about kind of your subjective view. How will you treat it? What kind of instrumentation you will uh, make for that song? And somehow I just felt that these synthesizers resonate in me now strongly. It's always been a huge part of my songwriting well, since the beginning. But now I thought, okay, like whatever feels right, I'll just try it out. And if it doesn't work, at least I have tried it out. But most of the times it has worked. It's because when you can imagine something clearly in your mind, like super clearly, and you just think, yeah, I hear it, and it sounds great. Usually it works. But it's also a matter of taste. That's why I say subjective view. That's my decision to treat the melody and chord progression and the drum beat in a certain way. And it sounds like what it sounds. But if you give, let's say, any song from Dark Connection to other producer, don't say anything to him about themes or nothing. Here's like a simple raw acoustic version of the song, like make it into something. Pop song, rock song, black metal version, whatever. Do whatever you want. And it will be totally different from what I have like planned. But that's how things are done in art generally. You just have to make the decision based on your own emotions, like what resonates in you. And you can never please everyone, never. That's the name of the game. But yeah. as long as you are standing behind it yourself and people see that still these guys, they kind of stand behind it and they enjoy what they do and they're honest with that, then people respect maybe even more when they see that they are not like posing and faking. And that's why you have to like just follow the emotions and take the criticism when it comes. Because in the long run, people see that you do it for the right reasons. And hopefully it will still be good that people will be able to enjoy it many times, not just like they listen it once through and then forget it, but that it stand, uh, stands the test of time. That's what everybody hopes, every band and artist. Do, do you think that perhaps some of that criticism comes because people try to pigeonhole you guys? I know we've talked about this earlier in terms of the genre. Do you think that comes from people trying to pigeonhole you guys into a specific genre so that if you don't sound exactly like what the expectations for that genre are, then 
they become critical. I, I, I feel like the best way, after listening to Dark Connection, I realized that I'm never going to say that you guys are a genre. You guys are metal. That's it. That's as far as the genre that I'm going to go. Because I feel like the moment I try to, I try to force you guys into this umbrella of power metal or whatever, melodic metal, whatever it is that I, I want to use, I'm missing the point here. And, and, and it's going to take away from the enjoyment of the songs themselves. Do you see that perhaps being a little bit of the problem here? People trying to force you under something that you're not? Yeah, I think you're on point here. That's what I've noticed and we've noticed that people seem to be caring too much about the genres. And I talked about this earlier, like you cannot fully enjoy a piece of art if you don't uh, experience it as it is. If you just think about the genre and where it should fit in your opinion, then you won't be able to enjoy it. Forget about the frames and everything. Just relax and fully go into it. Escape from your moment where you're then and there where you're like experiencing the song. It's like escapism. That, that's what I want to say. The song is escapism. Go into that and experience it as it is. And that's what I want people to kind of learn. Not just Beast in Black listeners, but generally. Like it, if it's a movie, a painting, song, or a poem, whatever, just kind of keep it, keep the mind open. But the genres are just something that helps in communicating. I think when people tell about one band to another friend, for example, it helps them to grasp a little bit. Okay, so it's something like you know power metal. Okay, I kind of then I get um, have the idea. Okay, there's some like melodic singing with high screaming probably and some fast drumming or something but it's a helping factor in communication and stuff like that but i would say we're heavy metal because you know judas priest is kind of the band that defined heavy metal that's my favorite band of all times and they are a great they're a great example in showing how versatile metal can be if you check out their whole discography Mm -hmm. listen to their albums and they have this soft and subtle parts slow parts and this extreme like like really ultimate heavy metal moments like in the whole painkiller album that's kind of what uh, defines heavy metal basically if you meet a person who's never experienced like heavy metal music give them judas priest's painkiller and then they will know what it is but it also has this melodic slow and even soft moments a little bit here and there not much but it's there so yeah you were on point anyway that's what i wanted to say <laughs> uh, you know with so many things for you to worry about when it comes to the construction of the album the lyrics the the sense the the themes the, all of this stuff uh how much thought came into your guitar sound for this album and, and how much did you want to bring from the two previous records or just completely go in a different direction? Well, I went through a lot of guitar sound uh, plugins and the drum sounds, the bass sound, everything like it, it's hell, you know, I hate it. I kind of love it because when you're going through some sounds, you're like, yeah, this is great. But then on the next day you come and listen, oh my God, it's horrible. So <laughs> you are so bipolar. It's so bipolar process like, you know, and that drives you insane. And in the end, you don't even know, is it good or bad? <laughs> but apparently it's good enough for people to somehow digest it and listen to the songs more than once based on the response that we've gotten. But honestly, after every album, it's a burnout for me. Same thing with Battle Beast and with Beast. And like, I just still try to educate myself. Okay, Anton, use your brain and don't get stuck in these stupid details like unnecessary details. There are details which are important and there are details which are less important. Like try to distinguish which are which. Mm -hmm. so, but yeah, the guitar tones are important, of course. That's why I spend a lot of time, like too much time. And yeah, difficult, and, difficult. And then on the record, you decide to uh, grace us with two covers, uh, the Man of War and the Michael Jackson. At what point, did, did you find room to to add these two to to already the the control chaos of putting the whole record together? 
I think originally uh, the idea of having covers as bonus tracks came from me because I thought if we make original songs as cover songs, it usually goes to waste if only like one small part of the world hears those covers, you know, not, not to waste, but, you know, imagine if there's a bonus track that's equally good as the first single from the album or something like that. But you know that only one country or one continent, people in one continent are going to hear it and that's it. I thought, let's not waste the potential original songs, but use covers. But after that, we kind of even agreed that uh, with the label that we'll have these bonus tracks in every release. I asked, asked them, is it like possible to give the whole world the same treating, give the bonus tracks for everybody? Even if it's a bonus track, it sounds funny since everyone will get it. But still, <laughs> yeah. I, I hate it when you know somebody gets something and others don't. Like, let everyone have the same amount of Christmas presents in Christmas, so to speak. <laughs> don't leave anyone out. But, yeah, I like that. Uh, I like that. Yeah, and then luckily it happened with this album that everyone gets all the songs and it was Yannis who told me in some backstage in, in a, on a European tour in 2019 that, hey, let's cover Battle Him. I thought, why the hell not? Because it, it's a great song. And I guess, yeah, the idea, I think it came because I used to listen to Man of War on, in backstage like one hour before going on stage and sometimes some other music, but the guys, I think they got tired of listening to this preparation music while I noodle on my guitar and listen to Man of War or some other stuff. I guess something triggered Yanis to at some point tell me, hey, that Man of War song, that's great, let's cover it. And the decision was easy because we both instinctively understood that that song and Michael Jackson's song they both of them have the elements which Beast in Black has simple melodies, a catchy chorus, same kind of chord progressions, like totally three or four chords that we kind of circle around throughout the song. And simple, steady, like rhythmical beat, drum beat, and strong lyrics. And everything is like in our minds, like the same kind of our those songs are built with the same values and the rest is just make making them sound uh beast in black like style but that's easy all we have to do is just record it and i've said it to some people while i was talking maybe not even in interviews but like with colleagues or something that you know even if you wanted to make a hundred percent copy of some original song you wouldn't be able to automatically when human copies something you already give it your own kind of yeah. touch you can't avoid it like uh, this from like not sounding your own a little bit so that's why it's kind of easy to give the beast in black touch Yannis voice alone itself already gives that kind of vibe wow this vocalist sounds like like he sounds no one else can sound like him, and no one else can sound like Eric Adams from Man of War or Michael Jackson. But we also love, love to use keyboards. Well, I personally love to use that, and whenever I feel there's a spot for them, I kind of sneakily put them in. Like in Michael <laughs> Jackson's song, there's the synthesizer bass which enters in the song at some point. In original song, there's no bass or synthesizer bass at all anywhere. So we added a bit more keyboards and heavy, bit heavier guitars and drums, and that's about it. But try to stay loyal to the originals for the reason that we thought the things that happen in the original songs are the things what make them so good. And only if there was something that we thought doesn't sound so good, we refined it in our own way. Mm -hmm. But everything else, we try to keep it as it is, like the melodies the song structures and the arrangement and all that stuff 
Uh, you mentioned Giannis. I have to ask you about uh, how is it to work with a vocalist as talented as Giannis is? It, does it make your life easier or does it make your life harder? No, it makes it easier because we have same quality standards, especially in the vocal uh, producing aspect. And we don't have to explain each other everything. Like when we record a song, then we start to edit it. We listen to the takes. And when we listen to the first verse, like through like 10 takes or something, we select our favorite takes from there. And usually they match like what I would have chosen, he chooses as well and vice versa. So that helps it. So, so we kind of communicate without using words, kind mm -hmm. of already read our minds. And then we just point out, okay, that, 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 yeah, let's go with this. And so that's really great. He has a high level of musicality, not just a great singer, but he has a really great musicality and that helps. Not all the singers are musical, like in that sense that they understand the concept where their vocals are going to. Like he understands the instruments there and the mixing process and understands better the bigger picture than let's say most of the singers in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So that makes it easier. And sometimes he tells, hey, let's add more harmonies or unisons or octave unisons for this chorus to make it sound like a bit fatter. And I say, okay, let's do it. And sometimes we realize, okay, that's not working. So then we just mute the tracks and don't use them. But most of the time uh, we use them because he also has, as I said, he has that musicality. He can imagine things what could fit there and that's why nine out of ten times it's like he's right when he wants to add something like some harmonies or what i just told like unisons and stuff like that one last question for you and that is that the success of the band is undeniable across these records i mean you guys have skyrocketed uh to to the top as one of the most successful bands in in, in music and in metal music right now i mean everybody knows beast in black i saw you guys in montreal in 2019 and the place was rocking everybody was singing the songs like it, it was like you guys were headlining the festival it was crazy uh, are, are you driven by that success or or you're driven by the satisfaction that you have of creating something that comes from within you and both of these things they like uh, feed your motivation and the will to move on you know even if there wouldn't be any live shows ever, even if I wouldn't have Beast in Black or my previous band or any, I have a feeling that, you know, I just would love to keep writing songs until I die. That's something so deep inside me that that wouldn't change. That motivation stays the same. But when you're a band, you do tours, uh, gigs and so forth. When you see that people really enjoy it and then it becomes successful, of course that motivates you to grow and be even more successful and have more of that same feeling and see more of these happy people in the audience uh, and when we started in 2017 it was funny because we started to get a lot of feedback you are so happy on stage you smile so much no one else smiles we didn't even think about it and then we realized god damn it we are always smiling on stage when we have to <laughs> you know, check the shows and it's it became so natural so no matter what the song's topics are, even there are so rough and tough and dark lyrics, but when we go on stage, we are not there preaching about stuff. We are there to entertain and like enjoy and make people like forget about everything else than that concert. You know, we are not there to bring the moods down and think about this bad thing that happened to this person in this song. And, oh my God, it's a, it's escapism, not only when you're listening to the album, but the live shows as well. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of escapism, but escapism nonetheless. And that's the greatest thing. When people like it, and that's the best reward. Like with the release of the first single, you know, we were on the music video of Moonlight Rendezvous for almost one and a half years because it was going on simultaneously with the album making. So it, 
and the script writing took also so much time. And you know, sometimes I wasn't uh, available, so the music video production was like on hold, like stopped. And anyway, so when it was ready, I didn't know any anymore. Is it gonna be like good or bad, like for the people? I think I always liked the music video and the end result. But the director, Katri Ilona Koppon, and she was in the same kind of a emotional state where I was with the album making. So kind of both were in a burnout and not knowing what will happen. But the best thing was that, you know, people seemed to enjoy it. The feedback was like they appreciate it and they are excited about this. Wow, this is about this cyberpunk Blade Runner Armitage the third and and when I see that people share their enthusiasm to those sources of inspiration, which I got the inspiration myself, that kind of makes me happy when people enjoy the same things that I enjoy. Um, that's the best reward, you know, share their enthusiasm towards something. On that note, Anton, thank you very much for your time today. It was an absolute pleasure finally having you on the channel to talk Beast in Black uh thank so you. thank you thank you for taking the time uh I, I'm, I was gonna say best of luck with this release you don't need me to wish you luck i mean you guys are gonna have tons of success with this album as you do with every single thing that you touch you have the midas touch thank you very much for your time today thank you very much it was my pleasure so thank you see you on the road some someday yeah we'll see you in north america soon at the next tour take care